Welcome back. Time for Hawk Zone. And Russell Wilson marked his 33rd birthday yesterday, but the celebration fell short after another loss, this time against the Washington football team on Monday Night Football. Our friend Terry Holloman is here to break down Week 12. Terry Bear, this is not looking so good. It is not looking good. It's not feeling good. There's nothing good about football in Seattle right now. I had to schedule extra sessions with my therapist this week because it's really disappointing and, and depressing. I wish I wish we were together now. I would I would hug you. But um, you know, hey, the game started okay for the Hawks. Uh, Russell Wilson threw a first quarter touchdown pass, but then he went cold again. So Russ says it's not the finger. So what is it? Well, of course, Russell Wilson's going to say it's not the finger. Whenever you ever heard Russell complain about anything, especially an injury, something that was nagging and aching him, I would think that any time that you break your finger and tear the ligaments in it and try to come back mm. in the same season, there's going to be some kind of effect there. And it's not just physical. Sometimes it's mental. So I, I, I think that there is something going on there, but I don't think that's the only thing. Of course, when you're playing with a, a different quarterback all season or half the season, it's tough to get everybody else on the same page again. So um, there's a couple of things going on there with Russell Wilson, uh, none the least of which is his finger. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, Sad way to spend your birthday, that's for sure. But yeah. you got to give credit to the defense. I mean, there's only so much they could do at some point. I mean, they were on the field 41 minutes last night, more than 41 yeah. minutes, right? Yeah, yeah, they were. So they had the, the ball for twice as long as we did, you know, offensively. The defense was on the field for a long time, and it's almost an impossible task to get things done when you're, you're on the field that much and getting that much activity. You just watch this team, and they deteriorated over the course of that game. You saw they started off uh, kind of strong. You know, they were the bend but don't break Seahawks defense that we've come to know this season. But as the game lingered on and they spent more time on the field, you saw they just got more tired as the, as the game went on. It's just inevitable. So that's what happened to those guys. They wore out. Yeah, I mean, I, that, it, it happens. What about DK Metcalf? He's not getting, why isn't he getting more targets? Well, I think everybody, you know, in Seahawk Nation, all the 12 is wondering why he's not getting enough targets. He's, you know, obviously the biggest offensive weapon that the Seahawks have on the field. But the thing about it is, is Everybody else around the NFL is not stupid either. They know that he's the biggest weapon on the field, so they're covering him accordingly. Sometimes he's getting not only the best defensive coverage guy on him on every play, but he's getting a safety. So he's being double covered, and he's just not open. And even though you want to just throw the ball up to him and see if he can make a play, you got to be able to spread that ball around and get other guys to make plays to free him up a little bit more. So he's not, he's not open all the time. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. You're going to keep an eye on this guy. What about the team in general? I mean, there was a there was a lot of hope kind of towards the end of the game there, but we're talking about losing six of their set last seven games. So what happens? Is there a shakeup coming? How does it work? Uh, you know, for this team, I think us as 12s and fans around Seattle, we've become, you know, you know, we've been, you know, we're lucky because we've had a, a very successful team over the past decade. But, you know, when things like this happen around the league and you start losing games, things ultimately have to shake up. And I've been one to try to fight this for a long time because mm -hmm. I love this organization. I love what Pete Carroll's done here. I love what John Schneider has done here. But I think there comes a point where you like, you know, we've won three games in the season at this point. Something needs to change. And so, you know, if we don't have the players in place and we don't have the coaching staff in place and we're not winning games, something has to change. Yeah. All right, let's switch gears now to your alma mater. How many Apple Cup bets did you, are you are going on this week? Like, how, how many are you personally involved in? None, he says. So, so, so here, check this out, Amity. There's two things going on here. First, I was smart. I knew that this wasn't a Husky team that I wanted to bet on. So I, I, I made no bets except one. And that's because I have an ongoing bet with my friend Marcus Trufant. And, you know, so that goes on forever, every single year. Like last several years, he's worn my jersey. This year, I had to wear his, his, his helmet in a public place. So that was it. I don't have any more bets going on. And plus, they didn't want to bet me anyways because they weren't sure they were going to win anyways. Yeah, okay. So what about you, Deb? This new coach, this new head coach they've hired from Fresno State. A lot of great talent have come out of Fresno State, the Carr brothers specifically. What, what do you think of this? What do you think of this hire? 
You know, I, I, the Huskies needed a shakeup there, too, as well. So I think, you know, I, I don't want to jump on his wagon too soon or crown him too soon. I'd like to see what he's going to be able to do. But he has some success everywhere he's been, and I think that's what the Huskies needed. They needed some leadership. They needed somebody who has some, a, a track record of success and somebody to get some good recruits in here. So we'll see what happens moving forward. I don't want to crown him just yet, but I am excited for the future. I like it. Okay. I mean, I'm hey, Central Valley, California, they come tough out there. Yeah, so, switching gears now to the fact that you, you're a football player, but you've been a cheerleader for a lot of great uh, organizations, and it's Giving Tuesday, so I just want to ask you, what, which ones are dearest and dearest to your heart? Well, we talked about my friend Marcus Trufant just a second ago. He has a foundation, the Trufant Family Foundation, that has been going on you know, since he was a rookie in the National Football League. And they do some incredible things in the community, particularly with disadvantaged youth, underprivileged youth. Uh, and Tacoma, where he comes from, is where it all originated from and started from. So he gives back to the community, to the kids in, in particular. And they do things like they've had an annual bowling event every year where they raise money, auctions, and things of that nature. And they give give money to every school in Tacoma and other uh, schools as well for kids to go to college. That's amazing. Tara, and, think and there's another one too, though. Cliff Averill, another guy that you guys are all familiar with, he has the Averill Family Foundation where they help people uh, understand what's going on with diabetes, particularly diabetes too, because it's affected his family. Mm -hmm. And he also gives money to Haiti, where his family originates from. So Cliff is doing some incredible things too. I'm um, still glad you, you got that in there. Terry, thank you so much for sharing your time with us, for breaking everything down. Hopefully, next conversation is a little more positive for the Hawks. Crossing my fingers, Amity. <laughs> I'll see you soon, Terry. And don't forget, Terry tries it. He's going to be trying something yes. new. Oh, yes, stay tuned. Soon. We got something coming. That's right, we do.